Uh, one of the things that the viewers need to be aware of is West Nile virus. Uh, this is clearly a mosquito-borne disease, and with all the rainfall that we've had this year and the flooding, uh, there's some concern that this might be a, you know, a bigger year for West Nile virus than we've seen over the last few summers. So I do think that people need to be concerned about that. Uh, you know, it shouldn't rule their lives and, you know, don't go outside or anything like that, but they do need to take some special precautions, uh, use some common sense, and try to minimize their risk from West Nile virus. So again, this is a mosquito-borne disease. Uh, if people use a little bit of mosquito repellent, uh, potentially wear different kinds of clothing that's going to protect their skin. Uh, avoid those times of the day, early morning and in the evening, that the mosquitoes are at their most prevalent. Uh, they can do some things there that will help prevent that mosquito-borne disease. Now, the people who really need to be concerned about this are the very young or the very old uh, with a, a weakened immune system because of that, and then immune-compromised patients for other reasons. So if they had HIV AIDS or they were status post uh, uh, organ transplant or on medications, uh, certain things like uh, arthritis and, and uh, other diseases where we use very powerful immunosuppressant medications, those people need to be aware of this and, and be particularly cautious. Um, the, the thing that people also need to know about West Nile virus is that it's um, you know, f more prevalent than the number of cases that we see. So for every 150 people who get infected by West Nile, there's probably one that has a, a severe neuroinvasive disease. And those are the people that we really worry about that get the encephalitis, the central nervous system uh, manifestations. Those people can go on to have very severe disease, die, or have permanent sequelae. Um, most people who get West Nile virus are actually totally asymptomatic. So probably 80% of people get, get infected never even know that they had it. And then there's another 15% or so that have a febrile illness, kind of a flu-like illness that's self-limited and goes away on its own. But again, you don't want to be that uh, one in 150 people that develop the neuroinvasive disease, and so taking some of these precautions makes sense. Then there's one other tip that I would give the viewers, and that is they can do some things in their local environment that will really decrease the population of breeding mosquitoes. So mosquitoes don't very fly very far, and if you just do a few simple things out in your backyard, you're going to help yourself and your neighbors. So make sure that you don't have that standing water in your flower pots. Clean out your bird baths about once a week or so, and that'll definitely keep the, the local population of mosquitoes at a minimum and potentially help you and your neighbors from uh, contracting these diseases. Well, the, the, the chemical that seems to be the most effective in repelling mosquitoes is called DEET, D-E-E-T. And you should look for a mosquito repellent that has probably somewhere between 10 to 20 percent DEET is my understanding of that's about the maximum benefit you get from it. Higher concentrations of DEET probably don't give you that much more bang for the buck. Um, there is some concern for putting a lot of DEET on very young children, and so you need to be a little bit concerned about that for infants. But for uh, adults and other children, um, uh, occasional application of DEET, I think, is a, a very reasonable thing, thing to do.